Well, it's certainly a delight to preach to folks other than the friars. They've heard enough of me. Today, brothers and sisters, we celebrate the solemnity of the body and blood of Jesus, Corpus Christi. It is a feast that goes back to the time of the 1200s when in Orvieto, Italy, a priest who had doubts about whether the Eucharist really was Jesus' body and blood was celebrating Mass one day And the host miraculously began to bleed after he had said the consecration. So he stopped the Mass and took the host and everything to the Pope. The Pope then asked that a feast be instituted. And he asked two particular friars to write the prayers for that Mass. One was St. Bonaventure the Franciscan. The other was St. Thomas Aquinas. The pious legend is that once St. Bonaventure read St. Thomas Aquinas' texts, that he took his own texts and put them in the fire, saying, they're not good enough, that Thomas's is better. Of course, that might be the Dominicans who say that. We Franciscans have had a devotion to the Eucharist for such a great time. We want to remember in the life of St. Anthony himself, our patron whose feast we celebrated yesterday, that there was a man who did not believe in the real presence of Jesus and publicly was agitating people, telling them that it's not Jesus. And so St. Anthony said, listen, have your mule fast for three days and then bring it to the town square and we'll see what happens when you bring some hay and I'll bring the Eucharist. Well, of course, the donkey went to go to the hay first. But as St. Anthony said, aren't you going to give thanks to your creator first? And so the donkey then turned around, genuflected, and then went to the hay. Brothers and sisters, we want to remember the truth that we are told. Jesus said, this is my body, this is my blood. He did not say, this symbolizes my body, or that this symbolizes my blood. It is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus that we receive every single time that we receive communion. I like to put it this way. It's the same Jesus, only better. It's the same Jesus who was going around casting out lepers, excuse me, casting out demons, healing lepers, Forgiving sins. And what does our catechism tell us about the reception of Holy Communion? It tells us that when we receive Holy Communion, our communion with God is augmented. It grows. We increase in our communion with Him. But also, our sins are forgiven, those venial sins that we have committed, the small sins. Why? It's Jesus. We can't receive Jesus and have him not heal our souls. But also we want to remember that it's the same Jesus. Jesus went around healing people who were sick. And therefore, Jesus in the Eucharist is the source of all healing. As we hear in today's Office of Readings from St. Thomas Aquinas himself, that there is no other sacrament that has the greatest healing power other than the Eucharist. How do we know this to be true? In the life of the church itself, in Lourdes, France, a place of healing, more miracles are attested to the presence of Jesus in the Eucharist than in the presence of the healing waters. We can go there and we can, we can read the testimonies. Those who were healed by the waters of Lourdes are less than those who were healed by the Eucharist either being blessed by the Eucharist in procession or receiving communion. Why? Because it's Jesus. One might ask and question and say, well, why aren't we seeing more miracles? And I would put it this way, because perhaps we have begun to allow the way the world thinks about the Eucharist, the way the world thinks about faith and about God, to infect us in a way. And let's face it, it's difficult at times because there's such a barrage that tells us God's not really listening, God isn't present, He doesn't intervene anymore, miracles are only for holy people. We can even think of some very pious things that we might say to ourselves about, 
Well, you have to deserve it. We don't see in the gospel any place where Jesus says to somebody, you don't deserve me to heal you. We don't see any place in the gospel where Jesus says, you don't deserve me to forgive you. We don't see any place in the gospel where Jesus says, you don't deserve me to save you from evil. And so if that's the case with Jesus, who is walking and living among us in his body and blood, his flesh, then it is the same in this Jesus who is present to us in his body, blood, soul, and divinity. Because it is not a different Jesus, it is the same Jesus. And so, brothers and sisters, I could go on. I could preach for about three hours, and I've done it before. But I'll spare you. I just want to recount one incident that happened when I was preaching about Jesus healing people A woman in a parish realized, if that's Jesus, then I can come to Jesus and ask him to heal somebody else. Well, that's what she did. She received communion, asking that Jesus would heal her nephew, who was living in Virginia and had been in a horrific car accident. The next day, she got word from her relatives after she received that communion that he sat up in bed for the first time unassisted, began to take his first steps, and began to make a miraculous recovery. And she said, I know, I know. She said to me, when I heard that news, I was filled with joy, and I knew it was the answer to the prayer that I prayed, that my nephew would be healed when I received communion for him. So brothers and sisters, let us not forget the presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. Let us not forget that he is the same Jesus. Let us have expectant faith, not just an intellectual faith that says, oh yeah, of course that's Jesus, but hearts that are thirsting, hearts on fire to see what is Jesus going to do with us today? How is he going to heal me today? How is he going to transform my life today in this encounter that we have Because we are blessed, we are very blessed to have Jesus with us, fulfilling his promise. He said he is with us till the ends of the earth. And he fulfills that here at the Mass, coming to us in body, blood, soul, and divinity. Happy Feast of Corpus Christi.